Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Jamal 4 here once again. Now, I know I was supposed to be recording Housewives tonight. I know. I know. And I'm still going to do it. But I was having some technical difficulties with my screen recording. And now I finally got it, got it to work. So I'm trying to use it while I got it working. <laughs> so I wanted to continue these scary stories, these animated scary stories I did in the last video. Uh, a few of you enjoyed these. So... And I really enjoy making it and watching these. So we're going to continue here. I think we're going to do maybe four or five stories. Uh, probably until 15, 17 minutes or so in. And we're going to see how what's, what the rest of this bullshit is. Okay. Now, if y'all remember last time was when the people were trying to kidnap the child and the, the men broke in the house. So I'm leaving off right where that one left off. So let's get it. <clears throat> y'all like my hair, y'all? <laughs> All right, let's watch. Anthony. This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony wanted me to come over for the night since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained a straight face and tried to continue with the call. It went something like this. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a- Bitch! <laughs> Click! Click! <laughs> well, okay. What are the odds that that's... Because Anthony is a common name. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> I'd be like, you know what, sir? It's been real. Actually, you know what? Would you feel safe to leave right now? Because you rode your bike over here. So it's like 10, 11 o'clock at night. I don't know how far away they live from each other. But would you feel safe going back home? At night by yourself, if somebody just told me, oh, mm, I might just have to spend the night. Well, but then again, he knows if he knows my name, he might know where I'm at. Chat, let's see. A brick. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. I bet. I hung up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. Oh, that's him. I, I I don't know, he told me. Wait a minute. What? Okay, so what if dude just had caller ID and maybe he's like Anthony Jr. or some shit? I don't know. Does your caller ID info display your name or something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. Shit, I we planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. Bitch. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV, and I went over to the window to see who it was. Oh, hell no. I spread the blinds open. Nope. There was a tall guy standing outside. Oh, fuck. He noticed the blinds moving and turned to look at me. 
I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, Bruh. listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gate to the backyard opening, as it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. Bitch, I'm gonna need y'all, y'all in this kitchen, I'm gonna need y'all to square up, get some weapons, get some butcher knives, because this looks like the Grim Reaper is coming for your asses, okay? And y'all just sitting here, just lollygagging, being scared. It's time to go into survival mode at this point. Call 911. <sighs> I don't know. I'm. I guess when you're in these moments, you may not think clearly. I just would be like, I'm. I'm trying to get a weapon. That's what I'm trying to do. Because guess what? As the law, as I said in my last video, watching these stories, once you are in my shit, I get to kill you. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Shoot. I forgot to shut the back door. You. Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door you and froze. There was a silhouette standing oh, outside the back door. Oh my god. I don't think he noticed me, but he was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. Bitch, I don't know if I could take this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long one too this is much longer than the other ones were Child. first of all I'll, Anthony should beat your ass for leaving his damn door open at night are you crazy that door has been open they've been sitting there watching movies playing video games they've been doing all this for hours and then my door has been unlocked this whole time if we make it through this I'm kicking your ass <laughs> shit footsteps moved over to the closet and then the closet opened I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as and again i'm sorry for stopping so much i'm just thinking about what i wouldn't want to do in these situations this is why you have a weapon because guess what if you had a knife a butcher knife of some sort as soon as if he was ready as soon as he looked under them curtains jab get his ass right in the eye as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. She weren't prepared. Anthony's breathing was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Nothing but silence in the room now. I can't look. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I can't look. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? Yes, he was can. about to answer, when the most disturbing, Memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. You I shuttled with the screwdriver sitting on- God damn it! This why you should have got one when you were in the kitchen! Shit. ...on his nightstand. I hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into his back. He let go of Anthony as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush, watching the house. The back door opened as the man stepped outside, looking around the backyard. He then looked out to the woods. I felt his eyes pass me as he scanned through the tree line. It seemed that it was too dark for him to see us. Then, he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. He's coming, Joe, Dash. he's coming. What? Dude, get up, we gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? We ran through the woods with the leaves crunching under us, giving away our position. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down with him, hoping we had run far enough. 
Not even 20 seconds later, oncoming footsteps from the direction we were running from came fast. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited until we could no longer hear them and took off back in the direction of the house. While running over the sound of leaves... Now wait a minute, why would you go back to the house? I feel like the house is probably where this nigga went. <laughs> he probably thought, well, since they're not out here, they're going to eventually have to come back to the house. So let me just wait for them there. Why would y'all go back to the house? Y'all should have chucked it to the neighbor house, called the police. See? Y'all ain't got no kind of survival instinct. Y'all frustrating me. Crushing and my heavy breathing. I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his house and this time, remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call the police. Anthony stayed on the line with them, while I patrolled the back windows making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seems stupid today. I'm scared. I turned on his backyard lights, and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him, standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. I would have moved. Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. But yeah, this was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in. Anthony should have kicked your ass for leaving his back door open. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> the honeymoon, oh lord. Me and my wife were on our honeymoon in Hawaii. Okay. We were on the island of Oahu, sitting on the beach. My wife got up to go to the bathroom, and when she got back, Come on, she titties. told me that there was a creepy man watching her walk into the bathroom, and when she tried to walk out, he blocked her path. She only got away because there were two other people walking into the bathroom, so he got out of the way. I asked her what the man looked like, and she looked over, but unfortunately, she said he was gone. Our hotel was walking distance from the beach, so we got back quickly, but we made sure to report the man to a police officer we saw walking on the beach, and then we washed up before going out to eat. We ate at a fancy seafood place and did some walking around afterwards. Close to midnight, we finally went back to the room and began to wind down. Then we got a knock at the door. I looked through the peephole of the door and saw a man in a maid uniform standing outside. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That don't look like Consuela. Mm-mm. Maid or not, if he don't, if he don't give me that nice little housekeeping type voice and he's sitting there looking like a deranged killer... Do not disturb. <laughs> I would put the uh, the little, whatever the little chain on the door. Uh-uh. I'm not messing with that. I opened the door, and he immediately tried to let himself in. Stupid, stupid, I pushed him back stupid. a bit, asking him what he wanted. He told me he left something in the room while cleaning earlier, and needed to get it out. Okay, well, how about this? <laughs> you not about to barge in. You knock... And you say, excuse me, sir, I seem to have left my exact item name in exact place. Could you get it for me? You don't barge yourself in here, because if you, once you barge in, especially looking the way that you do, it's going down. I don't know you. You could have jumped somebody and took their maid outfit, for all I know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> the only thing, we left the do not disturb sign on the door all day. Then I noticed he was making eye contact with my wife. My wife then screamed, That's the man! Bruh. I didn't understand at first, but it was too late for that. The man had already lunged at me, holding my throat with one hand while reaching behind himself with another. He pulled out a knife and started swinging at me, and if it weren't for my wife coming over and smashing his face with the lamp, I would have been as good as dead. The commotion drew out all the inhabitants of the neighboring room. Bruh, wait. One of the wait a fucking minute. Is this Muriel from Courage the Cowardly Dog? 
<laughs> really? <laughs> Y'all got Muriel and she got hairy legs. Y'all ain't right. Y'all ain't shit. The women started freaking out and screaming, making the situation worse. We called the police, and so did the hotel. It turned into a huge, horrible scene, but we were just happy to be alive. We were questioned when the police arrived, and Why some of the other the people on? around us claimed to have witnessed it all. We still don't know what kind of intentions this guy had, but if I had to guess, I would say he wanted to get to my wife. He must have been one very dumb person to think he would get away with something like this in such a public building. Late night delivery. Oh lord. Is this gonna be like the pizza man from last time? I'll never forget this night. The pizza place I worked at was about to close and I was getting ready to go home when the phone rang. I was working the counter alone that night so I was taking calls. I picked up the phone. There was complete silence so I hung up. About a minute later, the phone rings again, so I pick up again. Still silence. I was about to hang up again when I heard the very weak and cold voice of an old woman on the other end. She said she wanted a regular pie delivered. I remained polite on the phone, but on the inside I was screaming. I just wanted to get home and end my shift. I called out to my boss that somebody is requesting a delivery. He told me I had to go. I was upset at first, but I realized it's another tip, and the old ones usually tip the most, so I decided it was okay. I took down the address and told her it would be there soon, but she had already hung up. I thought that was rude, but I ignored it and yelled to the chef that I needed one regular. My boss told me to just go home after the delivery as the place would be closed, so a little before 10 o'clock, I got in my car and put the address into my GPS. The house was 7 miles away. Now, wait a minute. Don't... Well... Okay, like, for... Do they bring pies or some shit? I don't know. But... When you... Don't they have delivery cars... Specifically for delivery so that you don't have to burn your own gas making these deliveries? Anybody that works at Pizza Hut know anything about that can answer that? Because I want to know. I ain't never heard of them... Me driving my own car. Or maybe it's just because since you're going to go home afterwards, just take your car to the place maybe that's it i don't know the gps took me to the quiet side of town i arrived to the house it was a small one floor house on a very quiet and empty block i took the pizza and walked up to the door and rang the doorbell mm -mm. is that there blood, were no lights Dana? on in the house i hoped that she hadn't given me the wrong address i rang the doorbell again there was still no answer i was about to give up when i turned my head and saw somebody standing at the window I got a little freaked out and backed up at first, but I eventually got closer to the window to see the person. She's dead. It was an old woman, She's dead. probably in her late 70s. She was just staring at me with a blank expression. I yelled to her through the glass that I had her pizza. She didn't react to what I said, so I screamed it louder. A big smile ran across her face, not a pleasant, genuine smile. Oh. It was a smile that sent chills down my spine. I still remember that exact face she made through the window. I decided that I was freaked out enough and got back to my car and set the pizza in the passenger seat. I had to text my boss about this. No, I would have. I would have. I shot it. him a quick text and started my car, ready to get the hell away. She's in the car. I looked to my right to get one more look. To see oh, a woman bitch! I knew it. Right outside my passenger side window, giving me the same stare she had given me before. I put my car in drive and floored it down the street, not looking back. My boss never made me do a late night delivery again. Oh my god. <laughs> y'all are these late night deliveries going to these strange houses. Why didn't y'all just drop that shit and dip as soon as you saw the... Oh lord. Okay, this will be the last one for this video. Honey. It was Halloween night of 2007, freshman year in high school, and I was with my friends Ivan, Ryan, and Jesse. We were all dressed as the Super Mario characters. I was Luigi since I was the second tallest. Ivan was Mario since he's short and buff. Not that Mario was buff. 
Jesse was Waluigi because he's freakishly tall and skinny, and Ryan was Wario because he's just really fat. So they Damn. were the perfect group <laughs> costume for us. We live in a very non-congested suburban neighborhood with a decent amount of space in between houses. On Halloween, that's the worst thing ever. Less bang for your buck. We were trick-or-treating for hours, way past dark, and eventually came the time when most trick-or-treaters were heading home. My feet started to hurt, and I had to constantly switch arms for holding the now 10-pound pillow sack of candy, but we planned on going until our bags were completely full. A lot of the houses by now weren't answering anymore. It was probably past their cutoff time for giving candy to trick-or-treaters. Approaching our next house, we saw a purple bucket on the stoop, which was the best feeling ever. I was the one to get close enough to realize it was empty, which was the worst feeling ever. I turned around when I heard a knock at the window of the house. We all looked at the window. Couldn't see anyone, but heard someone call out, Wait! The door opened and an older man, late forties, already balding, stepped outside. He told us to come inside so he can get us some more candy. Come in, no. I said we could just wait out here. Thank you. He Somebody responded was... saying something along the lines of, Nonsense, come on in, we'll get you your candy. What I've been the... stepped no, in. No, no, y'all saw that. Y'all saw that, there was some eyeballs back there. First of all, stranger danger, okay? Look, sir, I'm not about to go in your house, okay? Now, either you bring the candy out here, or I can keep it pushing. Okay, we know, I'm, I don't know how old these people are, but I don't know if their mom or daddy told them about stranger danger and not to go into people's house. And where is their parents? Don't their parents usually monitor their kids when they're outside? Or maybe it was just mine. They was with us the whole time. They don't let us just wander the streets with no supervision. And said, it's all right. Come on, Dan, let's go. Thank you. I told the guy to take care and apologized. He just stood there watching as what we walked off. What the fuck is off, that? Not saying anything. I felt bad, but at the same time, that guy seemed like a creeper, and I figured I just dodged a bullet not going in there. If the story ended there, it wouldn't be scary, so of course, it didn't end there. We skipped a few of the guy's neighboring houses just to get further away, and continued on with our business. We were walking down close the to the nature preserve that? now, so there weren't many houses around us. At this point, we were now walking back closer to Jesse's house. I noticed Ryan had stopped walking, and I turned around to see what's up. He said he heard someone moving from behind the trees in the preserve. He saw that bullshit. Now this was before everyone's phones had flashlights, so we couldn't just go searching in the woods for someone. Besides, we were just telling Ryan that it must have been a raccoon or something. You may think this is a bit of a cliché, but when things like this happen in real life, you always assume the more logical possibility. It's just natural. Why would we assume we were being followed? I had to put my arm around Ryan's shoulder and nudge him forward. A little ways down the street, me and Ivan picked up on the sound as well. When we all stopped, the sounds of the footsteps from beyond the trees stopped as well. Ivan yelled at the obvious stalker to go away, or we would beat the shit out of them. I knew he was just bluffing though. I could hear the nervousness in his voice. The snap of a twig from beyond the trees triggered a fight-or-flight response in all of us. Me, Jesse, and Ryan all ran for it. Ivan was at first charging to attack, but he quickly followed after realizing we had all taken off. Hell yeah! We ran down the dark street, and we all noticed the sounds of at least two or three pairs of footsteps crushing the twigs and leaves in the woods. We Bitch. banked it hard right down Jesse Street when it finally came up and ran straight for his backyard entering his house through the back door. The first thing we did was peek out through his living room window. We couldn't see anyone. We all had to gather our thoughts and discuss what the hell just went down in his living room when all of a sudden we heard Jesse's backyard gate slam shut. Jesse dove to turn off the lights. There was a click and a bang from down in- Wait a minute, please don't tell me y'all were just as dumb as the people in the first story to not lock your back door. Please, please, please. In the den. It was more than likely Jesse's back door. We all
Y'all deserve this. Y'all deserve it. <laughs> Your stupidity. You deserve this. And I don't even feel bad for you now if you get killed. All agreed to go down armed with knives and face them. Well, thank you. Oh, see? See? They're not completely stupid. They came in the kitchen armed with what? Knives. That's what I was waiting for the people in the first store. See, these are, I mean, they're still stupid for leaving the back door open. But they came prepared, okay? The first people in the first store was on some bull. These, these, these right here, these are smarter children. <laughs> Jesse turned on his back door light, but there was nobody out there. Just then the front door opened, and we all screamed like animals. Jesse's mom and sisters came rushing downstairs. They had just gotten home from their friend's little house party. We all rested assured knowing it was just them. Jesse explained what happened, but made it seem a lot less dramatic. Oh. Me and Ivan went home after that and called it a night. At 12.30 a.m., I got a disturbing text message. It was from Jesse. It said, it wasn't my mom. I texted back what? saying, what? He responded back quickly, saying, It wasn't my mom in the backyard. My finger slammed the buttons on my phone, responding back, What do you mean? There was a long pause before he finally told me that his mom and sisters said they never went in the backyard. I told him to immediately check the backyard from his upper deck. He had already done just that. He also told his mom everything, and she had already called the police. They didn't find anyone back there, but Jesse did mention the guy who invited us in while trick-or-treating. Nothing ever became of that, and nothing ever happened at Jesse's house again after that one Halloween night. What the fuck? Alright. We're gonna stop it there. Y'all, y'all, I'm going to need y'all to get some more sense because it's frustrating to watch y'all do dumb shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, but thank you. Uh, thanks to y'all for watching. Thanks to you who guys are supporting this new series that I'm doing. Uh, I'm about to actually record the housewives right now so I can get that uh, up for you guys. And yep. Oh, before I leave, if you've made it to the end of this video, YouTube, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to mention this in every video now is that YouTube has made it. So you have to click the little bell. And I noticed that a lot of people's views, including my own, have suffered because people aren't seeing the videos like they're supposed to, even though they're subscribed. So you guys, make sure you guys click the little bell on the bottom corner so you guys get notified whenever I upload something. And make sure you leave a like. That supports me a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.